tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Satnam everyone. My name is Reverend Reg and I'm here again for another episode of Practical Magic and I'm very happy to inform everyone that again I have Dr. Stephen J. Cosmina here in our show. We had such an amazing you know pool of questions last week and you would like to hear more from him and I'm so excited because when we talk about goals and how to actually demonstrate goals in our lives, it would be amazing and we can even demonstrate it a lot faster and easier if we have someone who's actually an expert at it. So I'm so happy to have this episode again and please keep your questions coming. And he says, in this field of human potential development, an individual can work anywhere in the world with a laptop phone and earning an executive level income now, not in years. And this program puts an emphasis on living your life by design, a life you don't need a vacation from because every day is a vacation day. And he works by appointment and conducts interviews prior to selecting individual candidates for most of his programs to determine qualifications and see if there's an alignment regarding energy and objectives. So without further ado, Welcome, Dr. Stephen. It's nice to have you back. Wow, thank you so much. <laughs> it's good, Reverend Reg, to be back here with you. So excited and, and so so honored to be back and, and talking to all your listeners and sharing with them this amazing journey, this positive path for, for spiritual, metaphysical, and abundant living. Yes. Can I kind of roll with uh, what I want to share today? Yeah, of course. I love stories. I love reading and I love being read too. And I love listening to people with great stories. Yeah, you know, I, I love stories too. And, and I love stories that inspire me, inspire me to find that something inside to, to be, do and have more, to be a better version of me. And, you know, so I look at inspirational stories from all over the place. In fact, did you ever hear of that, uh, you know, that man, or maybe you saw that man with no arms and no legs, Nick Bojcik is his name. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, no arms, no legs, but he, his attitude is, is like a bulletproof attitude. And, he, you know, he travels the world doing inspirational and motivational speaking and, and does a lot of work with schools and with children and, and that kind of thing. And it's just like, wow, there are so many stories of inspiration out there. And, and I like specifically uh, when something hits really close to home for me, because we yeah. can see stories on TV and it's still kind of distant to us. But when something is like close or somebody we know personally, well, that gets my juices going even more. And and I yeah. want to share a story going back. This is uh, about, you know, goes back to somebody I've known all my life. And I, I'm looking at, I'm going to go back to like 2008-ish. You know, this, mm. this guy was basically a good guy, you know, had, had read some books most of his life starting when he was 18 years old. But, but made a lot of what we call inefficient choices you know we we need to be at cause in our life and we're at cause when we're consciously and deliberately vigilant over the thoughts that we're thinking well okay. it got so bad in well it was december of 2008 where i pick up his story uh he knew that something really, really, really bad was going on inside of him. And, and he really thought it was his heart. So he tried calling around to try to get in the doctor's office. Again, too stubborn. He wasn't going to go sit in emergency, probably because he had to spend a lot of time going to the men's room. But anyway, he uh, couldn't get in anywhere. He was getting close to the holidays. Offices were shutting down. He called his cardiologist and... Mm -hmm. They didn't have anything till January 9th. And here we're in the middle of December. And so he couldn't get in. And he just said, well, I'll take that appointment in January. But he, he something inside him, as he tells the story, he knew that he, he didn't think he was going to make it that long. But what happened is, as in divine intervention, a few days before Christmas, his cardiologist office called and said, hey, we have an opening 
on the 22nd, it was the 22nd or 23rd of December. And he said, if you can get in at this time, the doctor will see you. Well, he took that appointment and he went into his old cardiologist. But it had been so long since he's been to his cardiologist, number one, he was so bloated out of shape and everything like that, the cardiologist didn't recognize him. The cardiologist had no bedside manner, was disgusted in him, saying, you mm -hmm. obviously let yourself go. You haven't kept up with your care. I vaguely remember the name. And if you were here in my patient, it's been so long that your records have been archived. So I know nothing about you. <laughs> but because of the Hippocratic Oath I took, I have to treat you. So he listened to his chest and you know did some things to him and he said i'm not sure this is your heart and he scribbled some notes on a piece of paper handed it to him and said go to the emergency room right now and give them this note activity out here they're judging you you just say well you don't fight with them you kind of turn the other cheek by saying oh that's that's interesting excuse me and you just move on because you have control over your thoughts yeah. And you get to choose your thoughts. And by choosing the right thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. Seeking first the kingdom, the kingdom of right thought, the kingdom being the mm -hmm. kingdom within us where we get to choose intentionally and deliberately the thoughts that we want that are supportive of the life we would love to live, then we'll attach mm -hmm. feelings to those good thoughts that are supportive because they excite us. And, yes. and so it will lessen the impact, what's going on in the outer, whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's input from that comes in from any of the sense consciousness. I call them little antenna of taste, touch, smell, hear, and all that stuff. You know, we see all this stuff and it's trying to make an impression on our subconscious mind and sink in there. But we can say, no, stop, 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 stop. That's the renunciation. Wow. So, yeah. uh, you know, you be respectful and and, the, and, and you see yourself living with family members that will give you the respect back that you give them as well. But remember, nobody can control what's going on in here. Reverend Ruth Mosley that we just lost and just had her funeral this week, that was the founder of the Unity Urban Ministerial School in Detroit, had a very traditional family and, and very fundamental family. And she was studying new York at a young age when, you know, it wasn't really cool in her family growing up. Yeah, yeah. She burned her ministerial credentials by studying by, with a correspondence school, getting her lessons in the mail, hiding them, and in the middle of the night with a flashlight under her covers, doing her reading and filling out the answers to her test questions. So yes. rather, the, rather the family... That we are being directed to that vision. Well, there's a lot there, but it's a, you know, it's a really good question. And it's a question that, that people have all the time and that people ask all the time, you know, we're going to find our purpose in being in service to others. And by being in service to others, we're going to get everything that we want out of life. But we find our purpose, you know, by, by really identifying what makes us come alive, what makes us just every morning, if, if I had no limitations, if, if money wasn't a thing, I didn't have to do something and trade my time for dollars, what would I be doing whether they paid me or not? Now, what I would invite is, is Ro, I think we're connected. And if you send me a message, you know, there's a book out there that I could share with, invite people. I have no interest in this and I don't receive anything from it. But um, if you would pick up um, The Passion Test, there's a book called The Passion Test. And it'll lead you through a number of questions and a number of self-discovery items in there that'll help you identify exactly the elements that you need to have in your experience. And it may surprise you, you know, like for mine, I had to have music. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.